take a look at factoring some cubes, difference of cubes and sum of cubes. We're just going to mix them together because really it's the same process, same idea, um, just where the plus and minuses go. Let's start with this first example. How about x cubed minus 216? Just like the perfect squares, we're going to rewrite it so that we emphasize the a and the b in the formula. I wrote our formulas here, and then I've also brainstormed the first few perfect cubes. 1 times 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, 3 times 3 times 3 is 27, and so forth. And I only wrote out um, up through 10 times 10 times 10. Okay, so let's just emphasize what is it that's being cubed. Here the x is being cubed. And then for 216, notice it's one of our perfect cubes, and it's 6 times 6 times 6 is 216. So this is going to be 6 cubed. We've emphasized that the A is X and the B is 6. Following our formula, We have a minus in the middle, so we're following the difference of cubes. We have a minus b, so that will be x minus 6. Okay, next we'll have a squared. The a is x, and so if we square x, that will be x squared. We have a plus. AB, so X multiplied by 6, which is 6X, and then we have a plus, and B squared is 6 squared, so 6 times 6 is 36. And we have factored this difference of Q. I think it's worth noting that once you have this factored, you know, we always want to make sure that it's completely factored, so we might start trying to factor this trinomial. When you get to this step, only after you've used one of these formulas, this is not going to be factorable. So you don't have to waste your time trying to think of a couple of numbers that multiply together to get 36 and add up to 6. It's not going to happen. So it's completely factored. All right, let's take a look at another one. We'll go ahead and put in some variables that are a little more complicated. Uh, let's say, let's go with 125, we'll say p to the third power plus, and then let's go with um, m to the sixth power. All right, so we have two terms. Nothing is in common to both of them, so it's got to be a formula. So we either have perfect cubes or perfect squares. And of course, we're working on cubes, so these are gonna be perfect cubes. Let's go ahead and rewrite it to emphasize what is being cubed. 125 is 5 times 5 times 5. So the 5 is being cubed and the P is being cubed. Remember my silly saying, your exponents, technically here for the 5 is 1 and for the P is 1. When you have a power raised to a power, you multiply. Power to a power, multiply. So we have 5 cubed, P cubed. All right, so for the m, if we use that, what is the power on m gonna be so that when I cube it, I'm back to six? 
if power to a power multiply, that's going to be squared. m squared times m squared times m squared is back to m to the sixth. Now that we've identified our a and b in the formula, we're ready just to follow the formula. When we have the sum of cubes plus, this is going to be a plus, then end on a good note, plus, and we've got to have some bad news in there, darn it. So there's our minus. A plus B is going to be 5P plus M squared, and then A squared, so 5P times 5P is 25P to the second power minus AB, so A is 5P and B is M squared, so 5P multiplied by M squared is 5P M squared and then plus B squared. My B is M squared, so M squared times M squared, like bases, add exponents, M to the fourth. And we've got it factored. Okay, so why don't you try one? Why don't you try factoring 8x to the third power minus, let's say, let's go with 729. And then after you've done that one, practice just one more and let's say we have 8x to the third power minus 64. All right, give those two a try and I'll be right back to walk you through it. 